Perk of Gimel, Posuk de Dalit. Yosei Tiel Chalazenecho. You should have a spade on your backpack. You have many tools on your backpack. You should have a spade. And what is, why must you have a spade with you? Why you beshift chutz? The chafar tabo. Because when you, you're out of the, Rashi says, Michutz, when you're out of the camp, Rashi says, Michutz la'onon. You go out of the cloud and you do you have to do your bodily functions, the chafartabo, you will dig, the shafto of the chisiso asseosecho. You go and you cover your excrement. Meaning the excrement, the feces have to be covered. We learned many, many halochas regarding this, that you're not permitted to learn or pray or meditate within four cubits of human waste, it must be covered. This is the halacha of the chisis at Sechel. Why? Ki Hashem elokecho misalach b'keret machnecho. Because Hashem travels in the midst of your camp, l'atzilcho, to save you, v'losis ha'yivech l'fornecho, and to give your enemies before you, your camp, that means your environment has to be holy. And nothing which is inappropriate should be seen, meaning the, the way simple, this, this impurity of the human waste. And he will remove himself. So there's a question on the negative command. Is that referring to what we just spoke about? The human waste, or is it speaking that a person has to cover his genitals when he studies Torah, when he says a brocha, your genitals must be covered. And that's lo yir b'cha dover. Your erva, meaning the private parts of the person should not be seen because if that is the case, it's considered a disrespect, a negative commandment, and v'shav v'echrech and Hashem will remove himself from there. Okay? So according to one interpretation, we're speaking about the feces. They have to be covered. They have to be removed. Because God is now amidst. And therefore, the camp has to be holy. Kodosh means clean. Now, years ago, there used to be an expression that clean, cleanliness is the closest thing to godliness. Cleanliness. That's Machnech Kodosh. Then it says, Will you so here Rashi says, explains, what's the Yad? There should be a location. That's Yad. Will you do your bodily functions? Outside of the cloud. Besides your other various Tools, you should have the spade. Kamol klei zayincho. As in that means with your weapons, you carry a spade. The lo yir b'cho akarish b'cho erves dover. God should not see erves dover. Now over here, there's a sifarno that the sifarno says See the Ramban. Boya Machnech Kodosh min Atuma min Amius. The camp should be holy, meaning anything contaminated should be removed or something which is detestable. The Loyer Bochever is Dova, Tumo Tinov, Opsul Bezera. Here there's Psul Bezera, even illegitimacy. The Tumor Amamzer. Kamram Zal quotes the Mark Kedushin. The Shechin only dwells upon the families that have that special pedigree. 
Whoever was recorded in those who were eligible for conscription in David's time, meaning if you were eligible for conscription to go to war, that means your pedigree was checked and there's no illegitimacy, there's no question of your pedigree. Meaning a person who was illegitimate, a mamzer, came from an illicit relationship, adultery, incest, that person was not qualified to go to war. Why? Because victory is dependent on, is the Shekhinah with you, not is the Shekhinah not with you? And since you have this impurity due to the incest or the adultery, therefore he doesn't qualify to go to war because the Shekhinah has to be with you. And the Machn is not Kodosh. And holiness is not only something in the physical sense, unclean, or something that's putrid, but even in pedigree, if the pedigree is not right, the shin is not with that person. What's the reason? Why will God remove himself? He says, Because if a person turns his, his, his neck to Hashem, you turn you back to God, which is an indication of a lack of reverence, a lack of respect. In any one of these areas, if you're not concerned for his honor, your camp is not clean. Meaning, and you learn Torah there. You meditate in Torah. You say, you articulate, you verbalize, brochus or whatever it is. That's a lack of sensitivity for Hashem's presence. How do you say God's name or something of innate holiness if the location is not appropriate? <clears throat> How do you enunciate God's name, study Torah, verbalize it if your genitals are uncovered? So it's in interesting. The Mars is in Brochos. When it comes to even meditating in a location which is unclean because there's human waste there, when Halach had cited if you have, let's say, decaying trash, you have meat that's decaying, decomposing, and it gives off a very a, a stench, which is intolerable, that's the equivalent of, 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 of human waste. Same thing. You're not permitted, it's a Torah violation, and therefore, the Gemara tells us, Rabbi Yochanan, you know, in the olden days, you didn't have sanitation, you didn't have proper disposal. So when you walk down the streets, that literally there was feces in the street and there were certain alleyways people go and they would defecate in certain locations. So Rabbi Yochanan would walk down those alleyways. He would not meditate in Torah. Even meditation is not permitted if the location is not clean. However, let's say a person is naked. Or a person, for a man, he doesn't separate between his heart and his genitals. Halachically, you're not permitted to, to verbalize Torah, to articulate the words. You're not permitted to daven. And if you do, you're in violation of this negative commandment, that since your genitals are not covered and there's no separation for a man between the heart and the genitals, it's Torah violation. But what about a person who wants to meditate in Torah? He's totally naked. You're naked. I you to meditate in Torah? In regard to if the location is unclean, we don't differentiate between articulation and meditation. Meditation is hero. Even the Maharabit, the Victoria, not permitted. Person is in the bathroom. And all of a sudden, you want to think about something you had studied. You're not permitted. You're not permitted because the location is not an appropriate location. But if you're in a bathhouse, in a location, where you get undressed and people are naked and you're naked and you see other people naked, you're permitted to meditate the Torah. You're not permitted to verbalize, to articulate the Torah. What's the difference? So the Gemara says in Brochos, because Torah says, Lo yira ervas dover. The word dover. Dover, the Gemara says, is dibur. When it comes to erva, it's only when it's dibur, this speech. Speech is articulation, not meditation. However, in regard to human waste or the location where it's actually a decaying trash where it gives off such a pugnant smell which is intolerable, there it says the machne has to be holy. 
Therefore, it's not dependent upon what, whether you say it or whether you meditate it. Either case, it's not appropriate. And therefore, you're a violation of the Kodesh. But in regard to the Yerubach Erev's Dover, you're not permitted to see the genital or your own genital could be seen by another person. The Gemara speaks about a case. A person goes and he is standing naked in a, in a room and he puts his head out the window. So because his head is, is in another location, he can't see his own genitals. But since anybody in that location, if he would be there, his genitals could be seen by another person, that's Lerim Chavis Dover. Since your genitals can be seen, it's a problem. You're not permitted to what? To speak in Torah. So we'd make the differentiation between the genitals and the... Now, there's another halachic difference. What about a person has feces in a transparent vessel? The vessel is closed, is sealed, but visually you're able to see the feces in the glass receptacle. So visually you see it. It's not a problem because it's covered. But in regard to ervo, you see there's a glass door and you see through the door someone else's genitals. Even though it's another domain, since visually you're able to see the genitals, that's, that, that halacha is determined by what you're able to see. So regard to feces, if it's covered, it says, in regard to genitals, it's visual. If you see it, it's a problem. So therefore, it's spoken about what about a woman wears clothing that are almost transparent? She's covered, but you're able to, the, the, the material is so fine that you're able to see literally her flesh through the clothing. So although her flesh is covered, but since visually you're able to see it, it's a problem. You're not permitted to, to what? To speak in Torah if you actually are looking in her direction. You have to turn away. You're not permitted to see it. Now, there's a beautiful Rav Chaim Voloshna, there's commentary on Pirkei Avos. He writes that the man in the, in the Midbar, there was no human waste. The man was absorbed in their inner, inner organs. They did not have to leave the camp to do their bodily functions. As it says over here, you have a location outside the clouds of glory to defecate. And when you go there, you have a spade to cover up the, the waste. But the man and the Gemara asks in, in Yuma, what's the problem? Why do you need the spade when we travel the desert? We, if our sustenance was the man, was the manna, there was no, there's nothing which left the body. Everything was absorbed. So our answer is that the Jews had other food which they would eat. They would eat merchants who would travel when we meet caravans in the desert and we'd buy other foods other than the mum once in a while. So those foods, because it wasn't mum, it wasn't the spiritual food. There was a regular, the digestion process. So the body expelled the waste. So for that food, if you ingest that food, you need the spade to cover up the feces. But the manna had no relevance because the man was absorbed in your, in your inner organs. So Rechaim Velozhin writes this. Moshe Rabbeinu said a few parshas back, Lo odom. A person does not live only on bread alone. Kel motzi pi Hashem odom. But it's on the word of God that we live. That's, that's, that's a post in the Torah. So he explains that before the chet of Odom Rishon, before Odom ate of the tree of knowledge, the food had no representation or no element of the evil of that tree of knowledge. Meaning like we say to Baruch HaMotzi Lechem in Oretz. At the end of time, bread will grow out of the ground. There's not going to be a husk. One, one, one doesn't have to process it. It's edible as it is and it will be absorbed in our inner organs. Why does the body expel the waste? Because the waste, the husk, the covering, that's a representation of the evil of the Eitz And that's the reason why it's expelled. So he explains it this way. When you eat food, you have the physical element, which is the physical nourishment. You have, as I mentioned in the past, in the name of the Zohar, that every food item has certain, it's called the Tzotzi Kedusha. It has sparks of spirituality 
that when you ingest it, that those sparks of, of spirituality, they actually are absorbed into your neshama. That's the sustenance for your soul. So the physical is the sustenance for the body. The sparks of holiness are sustenance for your neshama. And what the body expels, the waste, that's a representation of the evil of the Eitzadas. So the waste is the, what the body expels is the Eitzadas. Therefore, because it's a representation of evil, God says that your camp is not clean now. It's not because it's just waste. Because it's something which, it's because it's a representation of the, the Eitzadas. That's the Ra. That's the evil of the Eitzadas. And because it's the evil of the Eitzadas, therefore it has to be covered up. You have to cover it. And if you don't cover it, your camp is not pure, is not holy, because that cannot coexist with Hashem because it's a representation of the evil. You know, there's a custom, it's interesting. We mentioned in the that the Orla, besides the Zohar, is an expression of the Ra, of the evil of the Tzadas, mentioned it many times. When Adam was created, he did not have a foreskin. Only if the aid of the Tzadas, the tree of knowledge, because it's Tove Ra, the Ra, the evil, caused that covering which is the foreskin. Clouds who were given the midst of Milo because Avram achieved a level of advancement in spirituality that by removing that representation, it opens endless avenues of pathways of Kedusha to give, give us opportunity to be able to advance our Nishamas. A non-Jew, even if he circumcises himself, he's considered an Oreo. So the Mishnah says in the Dorim, by citing a verse, not Jews are called Arle Lev. They have a covering of the heart. So even though they remove the outer covering, it's purely cosmetic. It has no impact on the spirituality of the person. But a Jew who is given the mitzvah of Milo, when you remove the outer covering, it impacts on that covering on our neshama. And therefore, many pathways of, of opportunities of spiritual advancement are open for the Jew. But that our law is a what is a representation of the Ra of the Eitzadas. There's a minog by a bris. When the mole removes that foreskin, you know what he does? He covers it in, in like in sand. He has a little receptacle with sand and he covers it. He covered, what does he cover it? I mean, eventually it's a question of what he does. He throws it away. It's covered. Because since that foreskin is a representation of the Ra, Therefore, he covers it. So it's similar to what Chaim Voloshan writes in regard to the waste, the, the waste that the body expels, which is of the ordinary food that has everything was tinged and putrefied by the Eitz Adas. So again, the physical aspect, that's the physical nourishment. The spiritual sparks of holiness in the food, that sustains, that's nourishment for the Neshama. The husk, all the other impurities which the body does not absorb, that's a representation of the Ra, therefore the body expels it, but because it has that level of representation, therefore it has to be covered, and if it's not covered, your camp is not Kadosh, it's not holy. He says a Chidush, he asks a question, why only, the Gemara asks, why do you have to cover the waste the man was absorbed in their inner organs? This is Rokhaim Veloshna's question. In the Midbar, in the desert, if you wanted to eat meat, you had to eat a korban. You were not permitted to eat non-consecrated meat. If a person wanted to eat meat, you would bring a, a peace offering. And the one who brings the korban has the majority of the consumption of the animals eaten by the one who brings the, the sacrifice. You bring a toda. The majority of that is eaten by the non kohen So this is not the manna. So if that's the case, what does the Gemara say? The reason why you have to cover the waste is because of the food items that you buy from the merchants, the caravans you meet in the desert, say simple. The manna absorbed in the inner organs, the carbonos, the koana made carbonos, right? If it was kochi kadoshim, zechatos, an oshim, sin offering, a guilt offering. So therefore, that's not the manna. So that was expressed from the body. And every Jew had relevance to every other korban. So if that's the case, that's why you needed the spade to cover over the waste. What do we have to come on? It's the foodstuffs that they bought from the merchants, and therefore, since it was ordinary food, therefore, that was expelled from the body. That's Rechaim Goloshin's question. So Rechaim Goloshin says, Chidush, 
something very novel, that since the Karbonos themselves were consecrated and had the same status as the Mon in the Midbar, and therefore the meat was absorbed in the inner organs. There was no waste. There was no waste. It was totally Kedusha. The Mishkan itself, anything that had relevance to the Mishkan was a level of holiness that was not tainted or touched by the Eitzadas, by the evil Eitzadas. As a result of that, the meat that was ingested and digest was fully absorbed in inner organs. There was no, there was no representation of Ra. And therefore, the Gemara asks, if that's the case, what do you need a spade? There was no bodily functions. On that, the Gemara answers that because they would meet these caravans of merchants who would sell provisions and foodstuffs of ordinary food, for that food, there was waste. And therefore, that waste had to be covered. Otherwise, it would be a problem that you can't, would not be holy. That's from Chai Voloshin. But it's interesting. The Karbonis brought in the Mishkan, the evil the representation of the Eitzah Das did not affect that because they were at that special level. Meaning in the, in the Midbar, we were like in a spiritual cocoon and that spiritual cocoon was the equivalent of Adam pre-sin. That was pre-sin. Anything which was contained there had that status. Meaning the Jews for 40 years, they didn't have to engage in any level of work, physical work. Everything was provided. Every day, morning, the man would fall. The Be'er Shomir, the wellspring. Any level of nourishment, whatever you would think regarding that man, it would nourish you at that level. There was no distraction from one's service of Hashem. The 40 years in the Midbar, the clothing grew on them, as it says. Simloscha lovolsa. Your clothing did not wear out. Not only that, it's rushes it's like an animal. Its skin, its hide grows with it. As the child grew, the clothing themselves didn't have to be replaced. The clothing miraculously would actually cover the, the full body from child, from infanthood all the way to adulthood. That was, this was all miracle. Why? Again, because, as we said, but it's, it's very interesting. The Gemara asks, we mentioned this, the Gemara voters ask a question, until Aaron and his children were installed on the eighth day, which was the eighth day of inauguration of the Mishkan, who officiated for seven days? Moshe Rabbein. So Gemara asks, what did Moshe wear? Did he wear vestments as Aaron did when he officiated or as the Kohen did? So this question was asked to Rabbi Akiva. And Rabbi Akiva answered, that what he wore, he wore a white tunic, a white tunic. He did not wear vestments of a Kohen. So we mentioned then the Shalom Kodesh explains why did he have to wear a white tunic? Why didn't he have to wear the vestments as a Kohen normally has, and wears? So he explains, it says by Aaron Kohen that the vestments are Lekovo Dulitiferis for honor and for glory. To glorify him that he should be qualified to serve before Hashem. Moshe did not need a why. So he explains that before the chet of Odom Rishon, before Adam ingested that fruit that has a representation of evil, what was his vestment? Torah tells us he was naked. What, what is the person? The person's the neshama. What's the vestment of the soul? The vestment of the soul is the body. That is the vestment. What happened after he ingested the Eitzadas, the fruit of the tree of knowledge? Because that evil became intermeshed in his physical being, his body became putrefied. So the vestment that originally was meant to be the vestment for the soul was no longer qualified. Therefore, you need something to compensate to be the equivalent of that. And therefore, that's the what we call big day kuno. Those are the vestments of the Kohen, and that's the covenant to Ferris. That now is for honor and for glorification. Because that is the representation of the original vestment, which is the body. Moshe Rabbeinu, was able to achieve a level of purity within himself that is his physicality was the equivalent of Kodemachet, was before the sin of Adam. He had actually expunged all that evil from his body. As a result of that, his what was his vestment? His vestment was what? Was his body. His essence is his neshama. His body was the vestment. As we see, he radiated. Although his physical, his physicality was so spiritualized that the holiness radiated through his body. So why do you have to wear the white tunic? Because as it says, since his genital would be covered, would be uncovered, 
out of respect that had to be covered. But it's not because he needed for glory or for honor to be the equivalent of the representation of the body. Of course, Moshe's body was the vestment for the neshama. That's the Shalah Kodesh. So it's very interesting. In the Midbar, if we lived in the spiritual cocoon, which was the equivalent of Kodam Achet of Adam Rishon, so why did they need clothing? Pre-sin, Adam was naked. The answer is that since factually we live in the post-sin era, what is that representation? Like Moshe had to wear the white tunic to cover up his nakedness because it would be inappropriate because lo yoch wa ervas dover, if his genital or his flesh will be seen, identically, the Jews in the Midbar, they had to wear clothing, because since factually it was after the sin. So in terms of the way they functioned, the function was pre sin Therefore, the food they ate of the carbonus was absorbed in their innards. But in terms of who they were, they were a representation of post sin And because they were touched by that impurity, because they were subject to the Yitzhahara, the evil inclination, Therefore, they had to cover their nakedness. And therefore, even the desert, it's loyer b'cherven's dover, that the generals had to be covered when they would study in Torah or say brachas or kriyashma, whatever it may be.